Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Are you ready for the story, Amir? Yes, I am. I'm so excited. Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The disbelievers continued to torture the Prophet and his followers wherever he went. But the Prophet kept preaching to the people and he gained more and more followers. The most notable event that happened during the time was the conversion of Omar bin al-Khattab. He was one of the most rabid enemies of Islam and of the Prophet. He was a tormentor of the Muslims and everyone feared him. It is said that one day in sheer anger, Omar resolved to kill the Prophet and he left his home with this intention. As he approached the house of the Prophet, he was stopped by a man. When the man learnt what Omar was up to, he told him, Your sister and her husband has embraced Islam too. Why don't you go back to your house and set it straight? Omar was furious to hear that his sister and her husband had become Muslims. He immediately changed his direction and set out to his sister's house. As he approached their house, he could hear the sound of Quran being recited. Omar walked toward the house and knocked at the door. When the sister and her husband heard the knock at the door, they hurried to hide the books. Omar entered the house and demanded to know what was the humming sound he heard. Omar's sister replied that it was the sound of them talking to each other. But Omar knew well the sound of Quran. So he asked them angrily, Have you become Muslims? Yes, we have, answered the sister's husband. Omar was so angry that he struck him. And when his sister tried to defend her husband, he hit her face too. Blood started drooling from her face by now. Omar's sister stood up and faced her angry brother, saying, You enemy of God, you have hit me just because I believe in God. Whether you like it or not, I testify that there no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Do whatever you will. Omar saw the blood running down his sister's face. Her words echoed in his ears. He demanded that the words of Quran he had heard as he approached the house be recited to him. His sister asked him to wash clean himself up before she recited those words. Omar agreed. He cleaned himself and came back. When his sister recited the words from Quran, his eyes were filled with hot tears. Is this what we were up against? He cried. The one who has spoken these words needs to be worshipped. Omar left his sister's house and rushed to the Prophet. Those with the Prophet were afraid of Omar, so they tried to stop him. The Prophet asked him, Why did you come here, son of Khatab? Omar faced the Prophet with humility and joy and said, O Messenger of God, I have come for no reason except to say, I believe in God and His Messenger. The Prophet was overcome with joy and cried out that God was great. Omar's conversion had a miraculous effect on the people of Makkah. More and more people now followed the Prophet. The disbelievers then made the life of Prophet even more difficult. They imposed a total ban on contact with the Prophet's family. The Prophet was forced to leave Makkah on account of the ban. During this period, the Prophet and his disciples mostly stayed indoors and Islam made no progress outside. During the sacred months, when people were not violent, the Prophet came out to preach. The ban on Prophet's family was lifted after three years and he returned to Makkah. In the following year, his uncle Abu Talib and his wife Khadija died. The Prophet had lost his guardian who protected him from enemies and Khadija was his most encouraging companion. 
After the death of his wife, Prophet married a widowed woman, Sauda. She and her husband had emigrated to Abyssinia in the early years of persecution. After her husband died, she came back to Makkah and sought Prophet's shelter. The Prophet, recognizing her sacrifices for Islam, extended his shelter by marrying her. One calm night in Makkah, one year before the migration to Medina, Prophet was sleeping when Angel Jibreel appeared before him. He opened the Prophet's chest, removed his heart and washed it with Zamzam water. He then brought a vessel made of gold containing wisdom and faith. He emptied the vessel into the noble chest of the Prophet and then closed it up. The angel woke the Prophet. There, the Prophet saw a white animal, smaller than a horse but larger than a donkey, with wings on each side of its hind legs. The Prophet mounted the animal and took off to Beit al-Maqdis in Jerusalem. This part of the journey is called Al-Isra. After dismounting the animal, the Prophet entered Al-Aqsa Mosque and prayed. He then saw his predecessors Musa salam, Isa salam, and Ibrahim salam, standing before him. The Prophet then went on to lead them in prayers. The Prophet then mounted the animal again and set out shooting into the heavens. This ascension is known as Al-Miraj. The angel led the Prophet to the Lot Tree. At this point of journey, Allah spoke to him directly and revealed to him the last verses of Al-Baqarah. It is during this miraculous journey that Allah made the daily prayers compulsory. Initially, 50 daily prayers for the Prophet and his followers. After the Prophet received these instructions from Allah, he came down until he met Musa salam. The old Prophet asked about the acts of worship Allah had prescribed for him. When the Prophet informed him about the 50 prayers, the old Prophet said, Your people will not be able to perform 50 prayers each day. I tried the people before you. I had to deal with the children of Israel and it was very difficult for me. Go back to your Lord and ask Him to reduce the burden on your people. The Prophet did as he was told and went back to God. Allah reduced it by 10. But when he came by the Musa salam, again, he suggested that he return to the Lord and ask for further reduction for the same reason. The Prophet continued to go back and forth between his Lord and Musa salam, until Allah said, There will be five prayers every day, each being rewarded as ten, thus making it equivalent to fifty daily prayers. The Prophet then met Musa salam, once again and informed him of the five daily prayers. Musa salam, repeated that he should go back again. However, the Prophet said, I have asked my Lord till I am too shy to face him. I accept this and submit to him. On this journey, the Prophet was taken to paradise where he saw dwelling made of pearls and their soils made of musk. He was also taken to hell, where Allah revealed to him scenes from future. He saw people receiving terrible punishments for different sins. The Prophet then returned home and he found his bed still warm. Islam started spreading rapidly in the region after this. The disbelievers were very angry with this. One day, leaders decided to kill the Prophet. They developed a plan in which one man was chosen from each of their tribes and they all planned to attack the Prophet simultaneously. An angel informed the Prophet about their plans and asked him to leave Makkah immediately. The Prophet left with Abu Bakr on the same night he was to be assassinated. They went south of Makkah to a mountain cave of Thor. 
After staying there for three nights, they travelled north to Medina. When the disbelievers heard about their escape, they put up a reward of 100 camels to whoever caught the Prophet. But in spite of their best search parties, the Prophet arrived safely in Medina. This event is known as the Hijra, and the Islamic calendar begins with this event. The people of Medina gave a warm welcome to the Prophet. One by one, the people of Makkah left for Medina, leaving behind their properties and homes. When the Prophet and his people settled in Medina, it was ruled by many different tribes. These tribes were constantly quarrelling with each other. It was only when the Prophet arrived, they had peace with each other. The tribesmen forgot their old feuds and were united in the bond of Islam. The Prophet, in order to unite everyone in closer bonds, established between themselves a brotherhood. The first step the Prophet took after settling in Medina was to build a mosque for the worship of Allah. Then the Prophet made a charter to make all the different people live together in an orderly fashion, clearly defining their rights and obligations. This charter represented the framework of the first commonwealth organized by the Prophet. After his emigration to Medina, the enemies of Islam increased their assault from all sides. The Battle of Badr, Uhud were fought near Medina. The fame of the Prophet had by now spread far and wide. Many delegations from all parts of Arabia came to visit the Prophet. When they learned the teachings of the Prophet, they were impressed and became followers of the Prophet. The Prophet also sent many of his companions who knew Quran by heart to new lands. They were sent to preach Islam to people living there. He also wrote letters to several kings and rulers inviting them to Islam. Neguas, the king of Abyssinia, was among the first rulers to who accepted Islam. This was followed by many other kings and rulers. About two years later, at the end of 629 CE, the disbelievers violated the terms and attacked the followers of the Prophet. The men who managed to escape took shelter in Makkah and sought the help of the Prophet to save their lives. The Prophet received their message and he confirmed all the reports of attack. The Prophet then marched towards the Makkah with 3,000 men. By the time he arrived outside Makkah, his followers from neighbouring lands had joined him and they were more than 10,000 people now. Before entering the city, he sent word to the citizens of Makkah that anyone who remained in his home or Abu Sufyan's home or in the Kaaba would be safe. The army entered Makkah without fighting and the Prophet went directly to the Kaaba. He magnified Allah for the triumphant entry in the holy city. He then pointed at each idol with a stick he had in his hand and said, Truth has come and falsehood will neither start nor will it reappear. And one by one the idols fell down. The Kaaba was then cleansed by the removal of all 360 idols and was restored to its pristine status. The Prophet then stood by the Kaaba and said, O oh disbelievers, what do you think I am about to do with you? You are a noble man, son of a noble brother. The Prophet forgave all of them, saying, I will treat you as Prophet Yusuf treated his brothers. There is no reproach against you. Go to your homes and you are all free. The people of Makkah, they accepted Islam, including the staunch enemies of the Prophet. Few of his enemies had fled the city when the Prophet had made his entry. However, when they received the Prophet's assurance of no retaliation and no compulsion in religion, 
they came back gradually to Makkah. Within a year, 630 CE, almost all Arabia had accepted Islam. The Prophet performed his last pilgrimage in 632 CE. About 130,000 men and women performed pilgrimage that year with him. Two months later, the Prophet fell ill and after several days died on Monday, 12 Rabbi al Awal, the 11th year after Hijrah in Medina. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, lived a most simple, austere and modest life. He and his family used to go without cooked meal for days, relying only of dates, dried bread and water. During the day, he was the busiest man, as he performed his duties in many roles at once as head of state, chief justice, commander-in-chief, arbitrator and many, many others. He was the most devoted man at night as well. He used to spend one to two-thirds of every night in praying and meditation. The Prophet's possession consisted of mats, blankets, jugs and other simple things even when he was the virtual ruler of Arabia. MashaAllah, that was such a wonderful story. Aren't you going to ask the questions today, Baba? Of course I am. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Alright. Now, tell me where did the Prophet go after leaving from Makkah? Hmm, the Prophet went to Medina. That's the right answer. Next question. What was the first stop for the angel and the Prophet? Hmm, they first stopped at Bayt al maqdis in Jerusalem. And do you know what this part of the journey is called? This part of the journey is called Al-Izra. MashaAllah, that's correct. Now, tell me the name of any one ruler who accepted Islam. Hmm, King Negus. And can you tell me when did the Prophet die? The Prophet died on 8th June 632 CE. MashaAllah, you gave me all the right answers, my son. Baba, aren't there any other stories about the Prophet? There are many, many interesting stories about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I will tell you all of them in the next days. It's getting late now. I will see you tomorrow. Good night, my son. Good night, Baba.